Hello, everybody. Princess the Bear here, and we're back going to Ayapa Day 2. That's right. Uh, we're going to go show you all the things we couldn't get to. Unfortunately, again, I have to go to work. I have a work conference to go to. Mm -hmm. not, not, not a work. It's, not, it's not a fun thing. I get to sit in a room with a bunch of stuffy old men counting numbers. It, it's, it's really not fun. I'm jealous. Hella jealous. But we're going to show you as much as we can. I'm going to try to meet with the princess as soon as I get off work. So hopefully I'll see you guys later in this video. Till then, it's off for more amusement fun. Be sure to subscribe. You heard the girl. Here we are sitting right outside the press office area waiting for the influencer breakfast. As people arrive. Thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, this is our logo, actually. We bring in giant size, and then this year we decided let everybody sign it. So everybody sign it. You can be on the side, whatever. Do what you want. Draw what you want. Take pictures. That's cool. The cool thing about Triotech is we make rides. The even cooler thing about Triotech is we bring the rides to the show. <laughs> so we got a bunch of rides. We got four different rides over there for you to try. You can film everything. You can film yourself. It's all, it's all free and there's no, no lineup, so please enjoy. I'm around, Coralie is around. Everybody with a try take t t-shirt can help you if you have questions. All right, so whoever wants to go try some rides, come with me. Oh, <laughs> 
Thanks for playing. It's been a blast. Now make yourselves at home, because you're going nowhere fast. <laughs> at the Triotech booth and as somebody with a degree in video game design like I do, I have to say that I really love the incorporation of all elements, your sight, your sound, your touch, and then fun, which is like the fundamental element and most important part of gaming. So bravo to Triotech for their amazing innovation. This idea has now turned into D-A-I-J, yeah. 
uh, for justice. So I just thought, wondered if you could say a few words about that piece and, and what work you guys have done in that area. Uh, we're not a place for justice yet. Not everybody feels safe, not everybody feels included. There's not equity for everyone in our experiences. So we still have a lot of work to do. We're, I would say as an industry, we are still learning. And we're constantly learning. But we need to be more and be intentional on applying our learnings into our organizations so we can move ourselves forward. But justice is making sure at the end of the day, no matter how diverse you are, um, what the differences that make us up, all of our needs are being met. Uh, and for, for me, that's justice. I know justice looks a little bit different, um, but that, that's not just your organizations. For me, that's, that's government, um, that's uh, legislation and moving us uh, forward as a nation. I think justice is, at least in my opinion, justice is that accountability. Um, that is, that the accountability is a big portion of the, the justice part of Jedi. Jedi. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, really appreciate your time. Let's give a round of applause. Give a round to Monet Rooney and Nick Taylor. Thank you for your time. And enjoy the remainder of your conference, everyone. That was a really interesting um, conference, speech, whatever, from the Big Break Foundation. Definitely check them out. They are good for lots of corporations, not just the theme park industry. And they do a lot of work. So check out their website and their Instagram. Awesome, awesome. So it's a great, great session. So um, joining us today, we've got, um, I'll just go from left to right, we've got Jeff Whiting, uh, VP of Operations for Whiting Foods and also the um, Santa Cruz Boardwalk. Um, we've got Kyle Allison, the owner of Altitude 1291, um, among other ventures and then we've got Rob Gordon, Managing Director of Food and Beverage for Hershey Park. So give them a big round of applause. For being <laughs> if y'all have questions, feel free to raise your hand and I'll run over with the mic. Thank you, Sherry. Sure. Hey, good afternoon. Again, I'm Jeff Whiting. I'm up here with two of my great colleagues and friends. And one thing I just want to say right off the bat is we're operators, right? I mean, I can put the suit on, but I'll tell you very often, I do not wear a suit like this very often. You know, I'm in the trenches, I'm working, and um, we're volunteers, so we're here to kind of give back and to help this, um, this session right here. So, you know, we think a lot about food all the time, but beverages is one of those categories that can be easily overlooked. And if you do it right, the profit margins can be very, very good. Um, this is going to give you kind of a, a broad stroke of what we're going to cover today. We're going to talk about the benefits of a of a program, uh, a beverage program. We're going to talk about the principles of an effective beverage strategy. We're going to think outside the bottle. There's a play on words there. Um, the value of alcoholic beverages, beverage program delivery, and then promotional tips and tricks that you can think about optimizing for your operation. You can have fun with it. It's not like some other industries where it's pretty stale or black and white. If you are creative, then you can you can do it. It doesn't mean it's going to be successful. Whatever it is, a drink or a you know slushy smoothie, hot chocolate. But you can you can do it and you can get it and put it out in front of people. So this right here, we talk about having a carefully planned portfolio. These are kind of the categories, if you will. You know, soft drinks, waters. You know, the 20 ounce bottle of water is going to be your staple. But if you get to know your Coke or your Pepsi rep. There are so many up and coming types of water. The um, Topa Chico's, there's the Smart Waters, and you know, it might cost you a little bit more, but you're gonna get a premium for it. Beer, obviously you can do keg beer, can beer, local beer, domestic beer. Spirits talked about that. You can do your traditional cocktails, thin cocktails, canned cocktails. That's a huge, like, as I mentioned a minute ago, huge growing segment is these canned cocktails. Smoothies is a staple, hot beverages, wine, and others. Uh, pair with your brand. This is, again, comes some of the creative creative uh, concepts that you see. I know there's the butter beer out there. I think Disney's doing something new. It's like a black tea with a kiwi foam. It doesn't always have to be alcoholic. Obviously, butterbeer is not the one I just mentioned. Disney's not. That's a Knott's Berry sarsaparilla there in the middle. 
The one on the left is something that we're doing here at the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. It's, we teamed up with a local brewery. We have a giant dipper. It's a big roller coaster on property. So we created the Boardwalk Dreaming IPA. And then off to the right is Cedar Fair, something they had done for their 150 year anniversary. Um, so just be thinking on your property, is there anything historic that you have? Is there, I mean, what, what are you known for in the region? How can you pair something that you're known for in the region and tie it to a beverage to create a little buzz and get creative around that? Crafted for special time events. Um, not everybody has events, but if you do an event or if you have events, create a product. Does, again, it doesn't always have to be a beverage product, but for this presentation, you know, create a beverage uh, a custom beverage product. Here in the, in the middle, that's Cedar Fair. They do these blood bags. They sell them during Halloween. And you'd be surprised. I think they're getting $15.99, $18.99, and they just sell them by the thousands and thousands. Carnival Cruises, I believe that's a uh, promotion they're doing on the left side. Even the non-alcoholic section, Icy, you can get those fancy Icy machines that will mix up your drinks with different flavor shots. Um, limited time offering, you know, put something out in front of people, test it, and see see how it does, and pull it. And if it's a winner, then you you know you, you keep it on your menu. Plan for every season. This is kind of more of the same here, but you're not going to want to offer the same beverage year round necessarily, especially if it's an LTO. Find uh, the seasonality of the ingredients. What's in season? How can you utilize those ingredients to make a cocktail? Uh, if, obviously, if it's winter time, you're going to want to get something maybe more around the holidays, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Halloween. Um, let's see, perception of how ingredients make you feel. So, you know, when you look at a certain beverage, you're going to think it's going to make you feel a certain way. Like you're looking at the, kind of the, the middle one, that summertime beachy, and you know, that's going to make you, it's going to put you in a certain mood based on the beverage that you're drinking. And it, they, you know, consider the beverage temperature. We usually always think cocktails or ice, but it doesn't have to. We have the whole hot section as well, hot chocolates. As you can see on the, on the right there, you can get some hot cocktails, hot, hot chocolates. So it doesn't always have to be a cold beverage. So yeah, my name is Kyle Allison. So we have a uh, FEC, we have 12 lines of bowling, restaurant, bar, laser tag, arcade. So I'm here to kind of give um, the perception, or not perception, I guess, the, some ideas from the FEC sector and small parks. The uh, unique vessels. So this one's very interesting. You see, you, everyone's heard about the souvenir containers of some sort. Um, you know, you saw those blood bags earlier as an example of a, a unique vessel. Um, there's a lot of stories, like for instance, for us, these, um, this isn't any of our pictures, but this um, syringe shot, we did jello shots last Halloween in a syringe, and they sold so well, we were selling them like five to one of the old style jello shots, that now we actually do them year round, but only during Halloween are they red <coughs> jello, and the rest of the year is whatever color we have, lime or orange. But it's amazing how just what changing that vessel of how we just gave that jello shot to our guest, like, quadruple ourselves and we actually were able to raise the price because you're putting it into something that did cost a little more for us to deliver the product in it's not just you know one segment or one category uh, water we touched on in the beginning it's amazing this water trend that's on track Topo Chico's um, the alcoholic water I don't know if you guys have tried that um, I went to the nightclub and bar show last year and drank alcoholic bubble water it was very interesting but they have it now you can buy water in all different ways uh, soft drinks, we talked about. How many of you have heard of Swig? It's a restaurant, or not, it's not what I would call it a restaurant, it's a quick serve concept that's just drinks. And this is a kind of, they're kind of a, I know they just came to Oklahoma, they just built some stores, um, but it's it's all non alcoholic, I mean, it's energy, it's mix ins, they're putting candy in the sodas, they're putting, um, you know, shots of uh, Red Bull. So it's it's just a concept all around drinks. And so that just shows how important this presentation is, that there's literally these restaurants that are popping up. And we have the Sonics of the world, but this place, they don't even, they don't do anything. It is just drinks, smoothies, water, all that kind of stuff. So check them out if you've not been to one. It's it's pretty creative what they're doing. And then smoothies on Ed overall. Cool. Thanks, Kyle. We'd be remiss if I didn't share lemonade. It's such a simple drink. It's just sugar, water, and lemons. You can do it a bunch of different ways, though. Traditional, you can make it in front of the guest. I know there's some shaking concepts where they actually serve it in a souvenir vessel. You can take it away and shake it up. 
We also flavor it, Jolly Rancher flavored lemonades over there are doing really well, and as well as frozen, you can even freeze it up. So there's a bunch of different ways that you can serve lemonade. It's very frothy. You might invite it over quick. So the Jolly Rancher, that's chocolate holiday, um, cho chocolate holiday world? No, chocolate world. Chocolate, chocolate world. Hershey's Chocolate Hershey's World. Chocolate world. I'm obviously running late in the afternoon. Uh, but that's a brass ring entry and it was one that we got judged. They said they have a 92% uh, their 92% cost of goods or profit margin. 92, I mean, it's as close to printing money as you can come. 92%. So that was that was one of the entries. We'll see who wins the brass ring, but that was that was an entry. That's the night yeah. White elephant alcohol. Can we actually do this? Can you sell this at an amusement park and an FEC in your venues? Are we allowed to be selling these adult beverages? And it's kind of crazy to think that I'm standing here right now being like, how do you make money with all these beverages and where can you sell them? How can you push it? And as I said, you're seeing it on the floor. You can actually sample. I'll give a little plug for the happy hour, four o'clock. Come and check out those drinks. You know, so it's just really crazy to think how much alcohol has become prevalent within our industry. And it really just comes down to about serving responsibly. You got to be smart about your program, have little controls in place, and really just making sure that you continue to take care of your guests and give them great experiences and opportunity, but understand that you've got to be very mindful of their safety as well to ensure that they leave your facility as they should to be able to come back and enjoy it again. So as we think about that white elephant, you know, you talk about 63% of men drink, 57% of women. You can see that you know, there's some demographics where they're very much only, 22% beer, 17% wine, 4% spirit, and 11 other. At least 36% of the population that drinks at all. Right, so that's where I can talk about that variety, being able to have a little uh, different options and everyone kind of have something they might like. It isn't just one size fits all. You just want to have some different options so they can find things that they would enjoy. So, you know, obviously there's a bunch of different ways that you can serve alcohol. You know, it talks about draft versus can. I think, you know, one of the interesting things that you kind of value there is how, what's your facility, how much equipment do you have, what kind of storage you have for kegs. I will say quite honestly, like I've gone away from draft beer because I always saw the perfect pour every time. They crack that can, it's exactly what I thought would be in there. But sometimes you got to think about yield on kegs and make sure that the people understand how to pour beer and make sure there isn't a crazy header. I always get crazy when people open the tap, watch it pour down a little bit, and then the cup comes underneath. You know, so these are all waste things that happen that we be mindful of, which is why I went to cans. But then also, but if you can have a great program, there's a lot of money to be made with draft. You kind of have a lot of bit more efficiency there. You don't have to run around with so many cases and whatnot. Yeah, one, we don't do draft beer. We just do can. We have two local craft beer uh, facilities in the park. And it's great because we go to all the local breweries. We bring in, we probably have a dozen of their beers from uh, six different breweries. And when they walk in, every, every can's a keg, first of all. And it's a, it's a piece of art. They look at the cans and the story, kind of like that picture I showed you up here. And so it, it's an experience within itself to see these local cans, something they've never had before, something that's going to be unique to their visit. And um, but as Rob said, there is a time and place for draft. We do draft at the basketball arena, and what Rob said does bug me, where you just they turn it on, they wait for a minute, and then they catch it. Anyways, um, localized versus remote. You know, localized is something that I primarily deal with, but someone like Rob at Hershey, who has 300 yards or 300 feet of, of line. Yeah, the Giants. It's, a, it's an arena, right? The thing that I was talking about was, is, you know, localized to me means like kegerator up on the concourse or out in a, a location. And the one thing you got to kind of think about is, is that delivery of that keg and how you're going to get to wherever that's at. You know, centralized remote coolers, that's where you can have your kegs kind of in the one spot. You just call over, hey, I need more Michelob, and they tap it. One thing that I was really sharing in our conversation was, is the cleaning of those lines is necessary, it's mandated. And so, you know, we would, before we would drop the line once a week. And like to the point of a 300 yard run, I mean, you're losing almost a third of a keg every time that you're dropping the line. I did, Will said that we did go to a system where it actually it's like an electronic scaling that sends a little pulse through it, that we actually only have to drop the lines every two months, every eight weeks. And that was quite a cost savings, quite honestly, if you have those draft lines. And, you know, just to really re-emphasize, as Kyle was sharing, you know, consistency in recipe and service 
You know, it's a matter of that you create a recipe, you build a beautiful drink, it tastes great. You want to make sure that the guest is able to enjoy that. You don't want to short them on their experience. You know, sometimes that bartender thinks, I'll hook this guy up and give them more alcohol. That changes the taste of the drink. You're going to change the profile. We really want them to have that experience that we designed. So it's really important, to, beside the fact of the cost, that you follow that recipe. And then really just the service standard of like when it comes out, you want it to look as loud as you want it to plan it and not take that shortcut and just kind of have it come out. And so I just wanted to share two concepts. And really I'll start with the one on the right. With, uh, we just hosted Dark Nights at Hershey Park for the inaugural season, which really well and have this amazing cup that lit up and glow. And if you haven't been on the show floor, that's actually the, the Rainmakers that are out there. It's kind of like a, a glitter that went in there. And what's kind of really cool about it is we actually batched those cocktails. And so we were able to kind of even put the glitter through the system on the kegerator as well. And to that point, it just kind of kept it very consistent. We could make it centralized in a location so that we didn't have to have alcohol everywhere. We could actually batch them all up in one spot, roll them out to all the service locations and have them serve. So it didn't have that I had product everywhere. I could actually almost have a, a commissary of beverage production. And then I'm always proud of our sloshies. You know, everyone's frozen fun for adults. And really what it comes down to is you see the high velocity um, freeze machine there. We literally just pour alcohol into the machine. So we just put in, you know, malted beverage. We've actually done um, apple or uh, you know, angry orchard, like hard ciders. Throw a little bit of cinnamon in it. That's what you see in the center there. That's actually a, a frozen apple cider drink that we do. So it's just as simple as just kind of changing the service and putting it in that batch machine to sell it as frozen. And we actually charge a little bit more for it. It's a higher price point, so you can actually get a little upsell as well. I'm back. He's here. Yes, just off work. But I got to catch the tail end of that. Uh, the food or the beverage. That was, that was great. It was really interesting. There's a lot of different things, like them. Uh, the fact they're trying to like simplify lines by, by eliminating choice. Was, that was a weird and one. Pre-mixing and pressurizing. And, and so it was super cool. And the demand they've seen over like specialty cocktails, over like traditional, like Jack and Cokes, are seeing like, we want the IP related, mm -hmm. funky name creative drink, which is 100% our bag. We so, do. Yeah. Everything about that was true. Like, yes, you only sell one burger, mm. but you can sell four drinks. Yep. Yes. That's us. Definitely, definitely understand. And definitely seeing how things have changed as far as where their focus is coming out of the pandemic. So that, that was good. All these panels are really informative. Like, they I'm, are. I'm really surprised that, like, we thought the show floor was going to be like most of what we were sitting. There's a lot of stuff down there. The panels are where the it's panels at. Are great. The panels, panels are great. The panels where it's at. Don't skip the panels when you come here. Don't just stay stay on the show floor for sure. Yes, but let's. Uh, I, I, I haven't. Re I haven't got to go down to the show floor yet, like at all. Let's take bear. Mm -hmm. Stand up. Now here we are. DDR brain. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm not really. You want to go to Arizona next year? I'll go to Arizona and see He Man versus Skeleton. I'm sure we could find other things that would make that worth a trip. I have the power. So, limiter. And you do get to keep the uh, magnetic lunch. Oh, really? Oh, it's awesome. You gotta have one too. 
So, I caught that panel, I got to walk around the show floor, I had to play on a motorcycle, so I'm happy, like, getting inside, I miss riding a bike, don't ask. But tomorrow, tomorrow we play. Tomorrow it's on. Tomorrow we're going to be in the trade show all day, we're not going to do any more of the educational sessions. We're going to go so enjoy the things. We're going to ha be have some amusement. So, until then, hit the notification bell if you want to see other videos like this, and... We have new videos five days a week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. We'll see you soon. Be sure to subscribe. I like this video. And if you don't comment, Sauron will come for you. You heard the girl.